Good morning. Welcome back, guys. Here at the 1870s Homestead, and I'm Rachel. We're sitting at my little tiny mini corn plot. It's about five foot by four foot. Then I have one a slightly bit bigger in the opposite corner. And as you can see, it's growing lovely. The other day, however, we had a really decent wind come through and this little corn was leaning significantly. It's popped back up, which is good. I do have a couple random old spinaches left in here that I'll pull out today. But I learn something new about gardening every year. And I have lost an entire crop to wind damage before. It just wasn't strong enough and couldn't bounce back. I tried to help it. I tried to let it go naturally. And um, yeah, it didn't work out. So I want to try a new technique that I learned about this year to protect my corn or give it a fighting chance, I guess, against wind. And I want to share that with you guys. And I also... I'm going to be planting something. I never really plant this time of year. Like after that first week in June, I'm pretty much always done until fall planting. And I think that that's just, um, I would guess a bad behavior because of natural assumptions that I shouldn't be planting <laughs> other than spring and summer crops. But there's tons of stuff that you can plant all season long because it has either a shorter growing duration or um, there's plenty of season left. So um, we're gonna get something else planted. I have lots of little open spots here and there and um, I'll share that with you guys too. But first I'm gonna just sit here and enjoy the birds, the goats yelling at me for breakfast and have some coffee. So I'm just sprinkling on um, a good helping side dressing of uh, blood meal. Corn is a very heavy nitrogen feeder. So I wanna do that first before I get going. Oh, and if you missed my last garden update video, we did a big harvest out here and it was just giving updates on things and shared a very exciting tomato blossom. And again, something always new to learn. I've never experienced it myself. I'm a hands-on learner, so don't go out necessarily and research and read and study things that I don't already have a concept of or want to understand. So because I'd never heard of this, I did had no in need or desire to go out and learn something new, I guess. And that was um, the fasciated, I think that's the way you pronounce it, tomato blossom. And I learned all about fasciated plants, what causes it, they get, a, some people say they don't know, but it could be this and it could be that. And I think 100% you guys are right um, because I saw what they look like and very common in heirloom tomatoes. And um, I am interested in just leaving one just to see what it looks like, but I heard that it can, um, some of the research that I read last night was it can rob a lot of energy from your other tomatoes. But I think I have plenty of tomatoes that I can sacrifice just one and try it out. Um, and the thing is, is I think I have a lot, like a lot, a lot better that way. So I'm not sure if it's just the plant itself is fasciated, so it's producing a bunch of fasciated blossoms. Um, but I can show you here at the end of the video um, how I can tell not only from the blossom, but from the stem, it's fasciated. 
Um, so I, I definitely learned something new from you guys and you guys are always, uh, we are the be each other's best teachers here, especially in this YouTube gardening community. There's so much knowledge to be shared. But anyway, so let me tell you first to remind you how I planted my corn. I'm pretty sure I shared it in a video. Um, I planted this using the square foot gardening template. Um, so it is extremely high intensely planted. They're four to six inches apart somewhere in there. And what I recently learned is the process of hilling tomatoes. Yeah, or excuse me, hilling corn. So, uh, you know, you've heard about hilling potatoes, you can hill tomatoes to create a better root system, stronger foundation. Well, the same goes for corn. And I was like, that's genius. Of course, why didn't I ever think about that? So I'm gonna see if I can't finagle my little hoe through here to hill these corns. Now I was watching Travis down at Haas Tools do his video last night and he recommended that to feed it first, do your feeding, that way when you're healing it in that fertilizer is being worked into the soil. So that's why I just fertilized it. So let me get this little hoeing going and let's see what we can figure out. So I think I'm just gonna, cause it's so narrow in here, I'm just gonna drag it down the center, gently, each direction. And I really honestly believe like I should have done this um, when they were much smaller. Um, I would think once they were about probably six inches tall, I should have done it for the first time. So I don't know if this, so my soil is so loose too. I don't know that it's gonna do anything magic, but we're gonna try it out. Well, one thing's for sure, I'm pretty sure life is back to normal in the United States. Um, we live probably 25 miles from the Metro Airport in Michigan, and it is air traffic control through here. Probably twice a week we're in the traffic pattern. And uh, my goodness, all morning long. It's exciting, I'm happy, I'm glad. The world is coming back together. <laughs> People are getting out, traveling, visiting one another. So that makes me happy. Um, so that was super fun. Uh, I think I, one thing to be careful of if you've never done it before, I know one of them, I got a little bit too low and I yanked a root off the corn. Um, so hopefully he's okay. I only did it to the one plant, but I kind of packed him back in. So hopefully he's, doesn't go through too much shock. Now this little patch I'm about to do is uh, quite behind the other plant. They were planted the exact same time, same day. Um, they are, this one though was quite heavily shaded out early on by a big large spinach plant om um, crop. So I think it's gonna bounce back fine now that the spinach has been cleared and um, the other patch didn't have as much spinach in it. That was super fun though, using my tool, my little hoe. I don't get, use tools much in my garden, and when I get to use a tool, I'm like, I feel like my grandpa growing his vegetable garden and having all his tools, so that's fun. 
Um, but I'm not going to bore you guys with this patch. I'm going to do it the exact same way that I did the other one. Um, so I will see you back at the garden beds when we get to planting. I'll give you guys a quick peek in the tent. The brassicas are still doing great. Um, I was just checking to make sure no, I've started to see some of the cabbage moths out here in the garden. So I'm just taking a closer peek because I've noticed that they're eating my collards right here. So just making sure nothing got in. I'm pretty happy with those tents so far. I did break one zipper. Um, I don't know if it was user error or a defect, but one zipper broke, so it's all held together with binder clips right now. But this is my sad little beet bed right down here. And I always stink at growing beets every single year. Just haven't figured out the magic touch to grow beets every year. I try really hard and I'm not learning yet. <laughs> so one thing I'm gonna try new that I've never done before is soak my seeds. So I soaked these seeds and we're going to see if that makes a difference and just fill in all these little, you know, the little spots where stuff didn't come up. And beets is one of the things that you can sow May through August, basically, in my area anyway. I'm in Southeast Michigan. We are, our last frost date is Farmer's Almanac says is April 28th. And first frost date is like April, um, October 10th. Um, however, we rarely get to listen to that these days. And our last frost was actually, true frost was uh, May 15th and we had super cold temperatures over Memorial Day weekend. So, just doing a little weeding and then I'm gonna just plug these in all around and see if I can't get some germination. But thanks guys for coming out in the garden with me and if you have any other tips on protecting folks corn that don't grow it in a conventional way, you know, um, maybe they're using raised beds, maybe they're uh, just have a small backyard garden plot. Tips on securing that little corn crop against heavy forces of rain, wind, predators, anything like that. Um, I know specifically things that I've learned is to get good pollination. You should aim for a five by five foot um, square of corn and um, and then I just learned this about healing and then I know that they're heavy nitrogen feeders so feed them really good uh, work in manure before you plant and um, like around here we had just observed the farmers around and right before they plant their corn they go out and spray their fields with manure and oh man, is that a stinky day around here. But it works, they have great corn crops. So um, anyway, we'll see if this hilling works. I'll keep you guys updated. So keep coming back for these garden updates. And um, we have about 15 mile an hour winds coming this weekend, which isn't super heavy, but it should be enough to test them.